Hello everybody, this is Arvid and today I want to show you how to read and write to Firebase's real-time database. If you still need to connect Firebase to your app, please refer to one of my other tutorials, Installing Cocoa Pods. To make use of the real-time database, you first need to install another pod file. So let's head over to the terminal and go and open up the pod file. So this pod file is in my project directory. So let's add firebase slash database. Save and close and pod.install, which installs database to my project. So heading back to Xcode, let's open the workspace. This is a vanilla project. I just added the Firebase configure part. So let's head over to the view controller and import Firebase. To write to the database, you need to create a database reference. So let's create a variable called database, which is a fur database dot database dot reference, which points to the root of your project, to this root. So if you want to write something, you would create a sub subfolder. If you would do it manually, you would create a plus, and this would be test and value. So this is how it's how the structure of the database is. You create a, a key and then a value. It's like a big dictionary. So let's remove the manual part and let's try to do it using code. So heading back to Xcode, let's do database dot child which is the value or it's which is the key so let's call this one firebase test or just firebase firebase and the value for that using set value is successful success if i can spell successful and let's just just build it uh, and then run it so build succeeded and let's run it so it opens a simulator session and we get permission denied, which is fortunate from Google a security check. So this means we don't have authorization to write to the database and you have two options. You can either sign in using fur auth or you can change the security rules, which we'll do for now. So heading back to the real-time database, let's change the rules to read for everyone. So this is, if read is true and write is true, and not auth equals null, then everyone can read and write. So let's publish this. So now let's try and run it again. And now we did not get any permission warnings. And let's see if we got some data. And yes, we got Firebase successful. So we managed to write to the database. The next part is how do you read from the database? So let's just quickly add ns log and writing to db and let's just copy this guy and paste this and this is reading so reading is a bit different you need to say from which key you want to read from so database dot child which is again Firebase because we want to read the value from Firebase and then you can add observe single event of type with block which will return a snapshot so the event is the value we want to get the value of the event and this is the snapshot so let's just print the snapshot and let's see what we got and run so let's see build succeeded and we got the snapshot back almost instant so this is the snapshot which is the data from here so let's let's just say i want to uh let's add another child to the database we would create database dot child again firebase dot child you can append children after each other which will create subfolders or which is a bit nicer you can do a slash here, which will create a subfolder. 
So if you want to set the value here, let's just call this folder and write, let's see what we got now. So now we did overwrite the Firebase with another subfolder uh, called test and the values folder. And the snapshot which we get returned looks like this, snap Firebase test folder. So this is how you could create more than one subfolder. And let's call this one another test or something and call this testing and run it again. So now we get another subfolder. Let's see. We've got test folder and another test. So we easily can add subdirectories to the database like this. And the snapshot looks now like this. This is how you do simple read and write to Firebase's database.